time has gone nine minutes after the hour, six o'clock, and it's a very good evening to you. Welcome to it, our broadcast, and it's brought to you courtesy of Government Communication and Information System, the GCIS, together with the Department of Planning, Monitoring and Evaluation. The name is Karabalansa. Glad to be in your company as we do this thing all the way until uh, the hour. Seven o'clock is going to be jam-packed with information. Uh, that's going to excite you, especially if you're a young listener this time around. I tell you what, we've got such an awesome show coming up. I was actually looking forward to it the whole day. And I'm glad the time has come. Lina la kake karabalans, kabla kwalo ena mutile chimu kashonya rena. Yona weekly she joa ke baka government communication and information system the GCIS hamma gole khoro ya planning, monitoring and evaluation. The population na kita wajeli longo re utu di thabe la bushi kumbi alo ono. Tadi ko ono vale rata utu misha na kaga jona. I'll invite you to call us in. I'll give you a tom free number that you can use. It's a very simple number that you know very well. It's 0800-142-446. 0800-142-446 So do that. You can speak in any language of your choice. Um, if we don't understand, we, we might ask you to speak uh, in, um, in English. But hey, go for it. Speak in any language of your choice. You're more than welcome to do that. So you're probably asking yourself, okay, it is a Thursday evening. Who is in the studio this evening? Somebody that I spoke to um, a couple of years ago. I think it must have been a year or so ago. And he did promise me that he's going to be coming back. And he is here. I'm talking about none other than Deputy Minister in the Presidency, Deputy Minister Buti Manamela. It's a very good evening to you. Deputy Minister. Good evening, Dumelang Sanbonani. Uh, I'm happy to be here. Uh, Macheroni. Is again, it? Macheroni. <laughs> the Macheroni. Um, hello, South Africa. So there we go. Deputy Minister in the Presidency, Puti Manamela. He was very excited um, to know that he's going to be coming here this evening because he's going to be speaking about something that's very, 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 very passionate extremely passionate to him and this is the national development plan but we're going to be extending it a little bit we're going to be extending that to the youth this time around and it's something that he's been doing quite a lot um, during my research today i've actually found a clip back in 2015 when he was mentioning uh, i think it was at the 20 leadership 20 youth leadership uh, the talk that happened back in 2015 and he mentioned something about leadership we're going to be hearing quite a lot about that this evening so stay tuned 0800-142-446 that's 0800-142-446 let's kick off let's not waste any further time we are talking about the national development plan right extended to the youth Am I correct, Deputy yep, Minister? Am exactly, I putting it correctly? Exactly, there we exactly. go. The National Development Plan is something that uh, we've been hearing around in the media, in the papers, on uh, social media and stuff like that. All right, But now this time around, we're going to tie it up with how the youth can get involved with this. But let's start with the basics. Let's start mm -hmm. here. DM National Development Plan. Just explain it to those maybe who are not familiar with it at the, at the moment. Well, the, the National Development Plan is the country's vision, um, which basically um, you know, indicates where we want to see the country in the next uh, uh, few years, up to the year 2030. The uh, president in, 20, in 2009 uh, to 2010 put, uh, appointed a national, I mean, a, a, a national planning commission, uh, which was at the time chaired by uh, the former minister in the presidency, uh, Trevor Manuel, and whose purpose was to develop the country's plan. They started with what they referred to as the time, the di diagnostic plan, mm -hmm. which was to diagnose uh, the problem, mm -hmm. uh, essentially, uh, you know, and, and from that diagnostic plan, which said this is what we think the problem is in our country. Right. And, and then from there, they then said, okay, so what should be done? Um, you know, what kind of a vision, where do we want to see South Africa in 2030? Now, not a lot of countries in the world, um, you know, are using this type of uh, uh, method where you have um, 
a, a vision and a plan uh, complemented. Most countries use five-year uh, term, short-term planning and all of that. Uh, you know, but we, th we felt at the time as a country and as a government uh, that we need to mobilize society behind one vision. We need to have a non-racist country. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to have a democratic country, a country that cares for its women, for its children, a country that, uh, you know, uh, is at service to, uh, you know, the poor by dealing with poverty, unemployment and inequality. That's where the triple uh, challenges uh, emerged. Mm -hmm. A country that, uh, you know, deals with uh, the, uh, you know, uh, uh, fact that we are from a history where a particular race uh, was more privileged than the rest mm. through a system of apartheid right. and that the legacy of that system is still going on. And therefore, uh, you know, we need to deal with that legacy, a country that says that the wealth of the country need to be shared by those who live in it, mm. uh, its land, its mineral resources, um, you know, but we also need a country that is representative uh, in terms of institutions, uh, a country which does not depend on strong individuals, uh, you know, to paraphrase uh, someone, but that builds institutions that becomes the bedrock of this democracy. Um, you know, but more importantly, because we're becoming a youthful country, a country that takes care of its young people. Um, you know, and, and that's essentially what the National Development Plan is. So it is that type of a plan uh, which, you know, we have been having a lot of discussions in government. You know, do we, uh, I mean, it's 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 about 498 pages. Mm. And I suppose as is now, uh, very few of us have probably gone through page one up to page 498. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's why we think that it's important that we, uh, should make the vision and the plan, uh, you know, firstly as brief as possible with identifiable objectives and goals uh, which all South Africans, uh, you know, should be able to understand and share in. Um, you know, so so essentially what we have, so it's, it's the plan mm -hmm. and, 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 and what we then do is on a five-yearly basis, we develop what is called the medium-term strategy framework, which is in implementing the plan in chunks. So every government department says in the next five years, these right. are our priorities. Mm -hmm. And those priorities are then broken down into annual performance plan, I mean plans, which are signed off by the presidency, um, you know, and then funded by treasury. Um, you know, so so the National Development Plan, I know a lot of people say, yeah, but we've got the plan, it's not implemented, uh, you know, and all of that. But the National Development Plan is actually being implemented. That vision, we are on, uh, you know, en route towards attaining it. We may, uh, you know, and, and just as is the case with a lot of plans, we may not necessarily be, uh, you know, seeing... Uh, certain landmarks being uh, achieved that are related to the plan, but the plan is in action. And I mean, if you uh, look at, for instance, the infrastructure, uh, government infrastructure spend, mm. uh, for instance, which uh, is headed by the president, it is as a result of the vision of the of the NDP. If you look at the oceans economy, taking oh, yeah. advantage of, oh, yeah. uh, you know, the oceans economy, which is part of Operation Pakisa, mm. that is the vision of the National Development Plan. So they may not necessarily be the investment that government, I mean, if, if, if you think about what government was spending about seven, eight years ago on health, on education, for instance, and how that has, uh, you know, almost uh, quadrupled. Uh, you know, if you think, if, if you look at uh, our spend in terms of the National Student Financial Aid Scheme, about five, seven years back, it was standing at two billion rand. Today, it's 18, 19 billion uh, yeah. rand rent spend that mm -hmm. goes to student funding, uh, you know, and a lot more that goes into health, a lot more that goes into, you know, various basic services. So that's part of attaining the vision that is, uh, you know, articulated in the National Development Plan.
Deputy Minister in the Presidency, <coughs> Deputy Minister Butimana Mela with us. Uh, welcome to it. If you've just joined us, it's gone 19 after 6 o'clock. It's a live broadcast and it's coming to you courtesy of Government Communication and Information System, the GCIS, uh, together holy hands with the Department of Planning, Monitoring and Evaluation. And of course, uh, Deputy Minister, so passionate about what we're talking about this evening, the National Development Plan, and we're going to be extending that to the youth and finding out a little bit more in terms of how the youth can get involved on this one. Hey, we're going to be talking about the National Youth Policy 2015-2020. Oh, there we go. I love seeing those um, numbers because look here, um, you know, when when you put a plan into action, you need to have a time frame. So that's what we're going to be looking at. We're going to be looking at something that's very passionate to me, and uh, that's the leadership role of young people. Deputy Minister is very passionate about that as well. So we're going to be finding a little bit more about that. So stay with us. 0800-142-446. 800 Four two double four six. That is a toll free number if you're going to be calling from a line nine. Hello, I'm in Sagaro. Or call the number I'm going to call. I'm going to call the number. I'm going to call the number. I'm going to number. I'm going to call the 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 number. Because uh, we, we, I don't want to waste too much time dwelling on the NDP itself as it stands alone. Let's go straight into how the youth can get involved in the NDP. Do you feel that um, the NDP is exposed to the youth the way we'd want to see it? Look, frankly, uh, not the way in which we'd want uh, you know to see that happen, and that is why um, you know the the uh, department developed. Uh, uh, you know, communication strategy, but also an engagement strategy uh, whose intention is to get young people, uh, you know, involved and engaged in the in the in the national development plan. So what we're essentially doing is we going out there talking to young people, uh, you know, talking about uh, you know their role. Uh, because I think one of the biggest, uh, I think, catalyst in the National Development Plan is that it is not a plan of government. It is right. a plan of South Africa and South Africans. And that is why every body or efforts were made to ensure that everyone is involved in the development of the uh, National Development Plan. Uh, and so, uh, uh, you know, the the uh, uh, the bit uh, or some bits of it is not about what government will do, but it's also about, you know, changing the behavior of South Africans in order for us to attain, uh, you know, the vision of the National Development Plan. If you imagine, for instance, uh, you know, a safe and secure country, mm. it doesn't matter, uh, you know, how much resources you invest into policing and security but if you do not have young people changing their behavior and attitude towards cr uh, crime and the life of criminality for instance it's not going to happen mm -hmm. uh, you know but also a safe and secure country means that you need to be investing resources to ensure that young people are employed um, you know or that they are in institutions of learning uh, you know and all of that but I think that you know I mean one of uh, 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 you know my passion and I know that we'll talk about it later on is the question of leadership and I think that you know the National Development Plan will not see the light of day if young people do not see themselves leading uh, in the uh, attainment of the vision as uh, uh, you know expressed in the in the in the uh, national development plan so if you're talking about for instance building a non-racial country right. I mean, we've seen quite recently a lot of uh, young people expressing the politics of identity for instance yeah. I mean, there was exciting uh, uh, you know activism of the pretoria girls who were saying oh, yeah. look not with our hair oh, yeah. for instance so uh, but so that's the positive part where young people are expressing and asserting their identity as South Africans or, uh, you know, as, uh, you know, wanting to be accepted as who they are and mm. not to conform to certain, uh, you know, rules and regulations for them to be, I mean, to belong, uh, for instance. But I think we've also seen some levels of negativity. People are asserting that uh, identity, uh, you know, in racial terms, you know, uh, we uh, uh, superior and and. 
and I think it's quite upsetting where yeah. you see, uh, 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 you know, a, a confidence expressed uh, by racist, for instance. So those are some of the things which government may put in place, regulations, laws to, in order to curb. But it's not something that, uh, you know, you can for certainty, if people do not change their behavior, you can be able to achieve. So I see, uh, you know, young people playing a role by being activists, oh, by yeah. being leaders within their spaces by saying, uh, you know, by not rolling over when uh, they notice uh, racist behavior or when they notice uh, sexist behavior or conduct, um, you know, but by also standing up. And I think we've seen young people on campuses saying, look, fees must fall. We've seen young people saying data must fall, challenging mm. the private sector to do business and make profits in a responsible uh, fashion. And I think those are some of the things that we really want to be seeing young people coming out and saying, look, this is the kind of South Africa that we want to see. A 2030 vision that we will complement should be a 2030 vision also that you know speaks to these particular issues and most of those issues are actually encapsulated in the national development plan and we're seeing young people in their own spaces and in their own way articulating that particular vision right ka se se ba ka nka rata gore wena ge le gore o motho mo swa o ka wa tsapela le tshomi tsa gago o tsore it's happening on air man we talking about stuff that's uh, that we got to get involved in ba wa tsapela ka mkana ba bona ba botse gore no ba tsheletse se ala moya se ka gore the population ka lotse leng gore eh di khausi khausi le pelo ya gago let's take our first caller dm i think a lot of people at the moment uh, they're quite uh, uh, they, they, they've heard what you're saying and maybe they would like to interact with you they've got questions or maybe comments let's find out let's go to ulundi um, i think this is in uh, the case rain area we chat into Matlangu. it's a very good evening to you Matlangu. Oh, yeah. okay okay information <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go calling all the way from Ulundi um, in KZN 0800 142 That's 0800 142 I, I was expecting this type of uh, um, um, a call, a DM. Um, I know that there will be one or two people that will be asking about some of these things. We hear them in the cities, in the townships, yeah. closer, you know, your urban areas. How involved, how reaching are we to those, to the youth in the rural areas, for instance? I think, uh, I mean, in total, look to see as I'm a cool look to see, especially in rural areas. CBs, it does look fun and about in bees or Sikulum San Nabandabacha, Sikulum San and Umpagati. Nyaizwa lendo kuti ngesini skati si sebenzisa amapepa ndaba anga figileli kulezo ndaba lezo abo ulundi and sometimes amapepa ndaba bafuna into ingati si juicy yabo juicy scoop they call it yeah juicy scoops if if we're not talking about uh, uti, u minister, u deputy minister, u tize, uh, u no makwape no tize. Uh, then, by, uh, so, so, uh, I know Aksinda Bale, uh, I mean, what we try and do, and which is why we're here today, is to ensure that we give as much information as possible through these platforms, but also using a platform such as Imbizo, using platforms, uh, you know, such as the uh, engagements that we have through the uh, different government offices where people can just walk in and say, look, these are the kind of services that we uh, we want. One of the big things that we're working with uh, with the NYDA on mm. is to get them 
to establish local youth offices where uh, if umuntu omusha use ulundi or use giani or use malamlele or wherever they can be able to walk into their local office and say to the mayor i'm a young person i want to know what the nyda or government in its totality can be able to do because uh, those are some of the things that you know uh, leaders at a local level should be able to provide information to uh, you know to 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 our people um you know and and, and i think manje kugcwele lento yabo fake news uh, yeah. uh, you know and and sometimes people don't really trust what they read mm. and all of that so so uh, that's why we try and ensure that as much information as possible goes to our people directly from government unmitigated uh, you know unfiltered Uh, through all of those platforms 100% 29 minutes after 6 o'clock 0800 142 446 0800 142 46 Kekarabolans Kestolana Sababili Matebele together with the Deputy Minister in the Presidency Putima Namela we're talking about the National uh, National Development Plan and um, and the youth and we're going to be talking about uh, national youth policy coming up as well as the leadership role of young people coming up but before we do that let's chat to Le- Lebo Lebo is calling all the way from Aliwal North. Good evening to you Lebs. Lebs and Wana. Eh KV. That work. Wa kira mbere. Ka bela ndata ke tabola utlo ho yena. Amuna ke ke le bo ho. Utlo he. Ba gasena eh se ke tshumana. E putso tsa ka dipedi tsena ka pala ka batlhara. Ya pele ke botse tsa mo bapi le batho ba mona ho ke lo se botse tsa mpa batla ho hlakelo a ntse ke yona. Ya batho ba di ba ho di rural areas bo fumana ke bo ka ntse na sanef sanef ne eh bana ba mona abana access number one wo wo onto the computer and the offices some of the offices they are far away from them um iba mhluma ba tla ho ho apply and then o and then o bena le ntwena ya di scam e seng hla ya matsatsi ngana o twe if you want to apply go look at deputy minister satwa bua no jina muno eh ka ka di fake news na di scam tse tse bolang gore eh ha o batla apply for a school o tlhuleng e tseng you have to pay so much eh ilo re ka o tlhuki ntwa government so how can how can we 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 be, we been given a, a direct a platform kapa channel mon mon mo ba tsa di rural area e ba ka gona u thusana without paying kapa ba ka thuwe ntho tseng go fela ya bo be e le nya u qetela putso ke ya go tla bua ka ditlhoko di priority e le di priority tse tsa buang ka tsona ke o re ke priority tsa bona le di from different department deputy minister e do ke priority tse ba ding kang ba thong kapa is it the priority from the different uh, departments ta bona ile bona so ke batla o hlakelwa fela muno ke ale bo tlhama mela o takalana community radio and i'm happy to be back here at last i was just going to say that lips that it's been a while that we hear uh, that we've lost heard from you guys i'm pretty excited that you're back and uh, all those problems that you had with the radio stations uh, with the radio station is sorted thank you so much enjoy your evening There we go. It's 0800-142-446. We would like to hear from you. What is it that may be in your mind at the moment as we speak to the Deputy Minister here with regards to the National Development Plan? We'd like to hear from you. 0800-142-446. Let's go to those questions then, DM. I think ICT, that's how I put it down here when Lebo was talking about, I guess he mentioned that, no, I've heard you guys addressing issues in the rural area, but we extend the Lebo, I don't know. But um, ICT... Any 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 anything that we're doing with regards to that to help the youth even mm. in the in the rural areas because ICT is playing a very important role in mm. fact in terms of achieving some of these mm. things that uh, the national development plan is talking about. Mm. Look, I mean, uh, national development plan talks about the broader access in terms of ICT. It talks about the rollout of broadband in order for us to make uh, access to. Uh, you know information communications technology must cheaper uh, i mean south africa is one of the countries where data is the highest yeah although but bali ba ntsi bana lena ke a tsepa lena le bona phone from cell phone ya high probably ke smartphone but bali ba ntsi bana le tsona di smartphone impa ba gone o ka kena 
the uh, website it's say it's saying it's a puso hore ba botse dipotso eh amen ha ba bana ba skola ba gone kena ho national student financial aid scheme ho ba di website sa university hore ba gone o ka botsa le ho apply eh le he puso ke a tsiba le fapala tsa tutu tse tse public higher education bana le eh program ya bona ba ibitsa apply now the centralized application system e leng hore e e tsa hore ba ithuti ba gone ka apply la university ba apply la hapeli eh le bo ns fast le bazaar and all of that but i think to ya data ke yona ntwe leng hore puso ile ban eh ile bahane liona ke ka mo eh eh le fapha la eh information eh and i mean eh telecommunications le lebellane le ho ka rola out broadband ho re re ka gona ho eh eh ho the cost tsa data so re tsapa hore mona ko nge sa fetse simpilo re tla bere gone ho ka fokotsa di cost tsa 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 data ke ya mathom sa o bere ke hore di priorities tse di bewang ke di department ba be ya di priority tse morao ha re ba buisane le di sectors wa le di constituencies tse itseng ho tswana le rona mane ho DPME le ho NYDA le mafapaitseng ha re le bele tsi dinyakwa tsa batho ba batsha re buisana le batho ba batsha hore na what are the needs interests and aspirations of young people and on the basis of that we we then develop those priorities and ke ka mo re tsebang hore di sinyakwa sa sholo sa batho ba batsha ke mesebetsi hape le hore ba khone ho kra thego mo ho ka tlhomeng di khwebo potlana li tse ding tsa o tshwana le le tseo so so ke ho ka boledi sana le bona batsha re lebella hape le hore ho pula hore ke puso ya e e toletse mpele ke mogatlo tsa politiki ANC o ileng hore o buile le batho go ka goboketsa eh di nyakwa tsa bona mo manifesto eh tse ileng hore ke ditshepiso tse political party e o idientseng eh so hai hai busa i busa on the basis ya 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 yona manifesto so ke ka mo re eh reeling by DP, dpme we want to ensure that the programs of each and every government department is in line firstly with the national development plan because that's the country's plan right and secondly with what we believe are the national priorities that have been identified by the people in general through engagements and all of that Oh eight hundred one four two double four six. I can see lines are flashing DM. We're going to be having quite a number of people calling in. It's a very interesting subject. In fact, like I said earlier on, that I've been looking forward to it myself. So I'm pretty excited that you are here, Deputy Minister in the Presidency, Buti Mana Mela. Here, oh eight hundred one four two double four six. Oh eight hundred one four two double four six. I was reading something DM, and these words stood out for me, and it's something that you were addressing. Um, in fact, the NDP speaks about that as well. Um, issues of uh, potential, as far as the youth is concerned, issues mm -hmm. of ability, education, and hard work. Tell us more about that. Look, I mean the the, the main the main investment that government has made, um, you know, over the last few years has been in relation to education and skills. Right. If you look at uh, what has been done for the last. Uh, uh, you know, few years was to firstly increase the budget that goes into education, skills, uh, and all of that. Um, and of course, there are still challenges. Um, you know, and from time to time, government obviously looks at reviewing, uh, you know, the curriculum content, and based also on what are the pressing need that uh, uh, you know we we uh, uh, we we have. If I mean I was I was reading an interesting article uh, on on June 16, 1976 that says in Soweto at the time there were about uh, ten schools, ten high schools mm. in 1976. And if you look at what's happening now, you've got more than a hundred uh, uh, you know high schools only in Soweto. Yeah. At the time, you had no fewer uh, than a thousand black students going into what would have been referred to as uh, historically white institutions. Uh, and I think the situation has drastically improved if you compare, uh, you know, those numbers, uh, you know, to, to, to now. And in fact, mm -hmm. the president's major priority is around 
ensuring that we broaden access to education because we believe that through education you will be able to empower young people to be able to make you know a bigger difference and one of the things which we've been attending to uh, you know recently has been to ensure that those young people who are graduates are therefore integrated into the workforce or yeah. they are empowered to be able to pursue entrepreneurship. And this is one of the questions I always ask, uh, you know, university vice chancellors all the time when I meet with them as to how do we train people, give them degrees and all of that, and then we expect those people not to be able to be self-sufficient. Yeah. In, and, and and therefore I think that, uh, you know, there, there has not been any progress made which can be equaled to the progress that has been made for the last 10 years in terms of education in our country. All right, coming up, there's a difference between management and leadership. And uh, DM is talking about leadership or will be talking about leadership. Uh, there's something that I read, actually, DM, and this is a book by John Maxwell. I think it's uh, the uh, 10 Indispensable Qualities of a Leader, if I'm not mistaken. That's the title of the book. And uh, in that book, he mentions that if you think you are leading and nobody's following you, then you're only taking a walk. <laughs> and we'll explore that coming up uh, just now in a short bit. Let's take Tapo from Clegg's Hello. T-Man. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Uh, even my producers let me know that uh, signal I crang on the desk is not is not good. Get logo pa buwe le kodi munyana ga nyane tsepo. Oh, re Yeah, you go good Yeah. No, thank you. But Thank you so much for your call. I really appreciate it. Ralo Bohala FFM, thank you so much for your participation, uh, participation rather, in this show this evening. 0800 142 DM. We're gonna let's take another one. Okay. Uh, let's line let's them up. At least call. we can take three at a time, and then we can just go back to the questions after that. Let's chat to Auntie Chichi. Is on the uh, okay. I've been told Auntie Chichi -Chi is gone. All right. Okay. Uh, all right. This this was the only person that was lined up. Okay. We can go back to those questions, DM. I think firstly, I mean, we we have uh, a primary for young people who have got the National Youth Development Agency. And of course, there are challenges. But I think that what we've seen over the last three, four years has been progress that has been made by the National Youth Development Agency in essentially reaching out to more and more young people. Mm -hmm. um, and, and what I implore... Uh, you know, young people is to go into the NYDA branches, wherever they are. We've got 14, uh, you know, countrywide. We'll be opening two more in the next two years or so. Um, you know, if it's about scholarships, if it's about support for their businesses, if it's about, you know, wanting to be on the employment, uh, unemployment uh, uh, database, if it's about, uh, uh, you know, uh, career guidance, uh, business support, 
go to your NYDA office. Uh, one of the big fights that you know the the NYDA is championing is to ensure that government increases the budget uh, of mm-hmm. the NYDA so that we're able to expand the services that uh, the NYDA is providing to our communities. And what I want to emphasize is that we must not take a situation where in people are given services on the basis of their political okay. parties or yeah. political affiliations right. or factions within a political party as we must challenge that we must make sure that we expose any public servant who refuses to give anyone service on the basis of uh, you know their political affiliation or their race or anything of the sort that is unacceptable unacceptable and if we begin to talk more about it and if we expose it we believe that it will stop but beyond the 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 nyda uh, you know we have the idc uh, the national empowerment fund which all of those institutions have dedicated billions of friends directed towards supporting businesses the presidential working group is uh, on youth is intended to consolidate all of government's effort, uh, you know, focusing on youth intervention. And I must say that part of our bigger priority mm. is to ensure that we get young people employed, is to ensure that we get young people's businesses supported, because through youth entrepreneurship, we can be able to meet the 11 million target that we've set in the NDP around youth employment. But I think also more than that, uh, part of the things that we want to be uh, and, and which we'll be, uh, you know, announcing in the next few uh, months or so is, uh, you know, a revised framework on National Youth Service where we will get millions of young people dedicated towards services, uh, towards their community, but in the process getting skills and also in the process, uh, you know, a sense of national solidarity, social cohesion. But I think more importantly, getting young people belonging uh, or a sense of belonging to their own country. Mm-hmm. Coming up, you probably heard about this, or maybe let me ask you if you've heard about it. Have you heard about life and legacy of O.R. Tambo? Uh, it's just a line that I've read, actually, but we're going to be dwelling more in that coming up now shortly. 800 142 It's gone 14 minutes just before the hour, 7 o'clock. Let's take a caller quickly. I think we've got lined up from Honamo Mohauteng. In fact, I'm very happy because... Uh, uh, because I'm carrier So this is we chatting to Lerato. Lerato's calling from TUT. I'm very excited okay. to see somebody from TUT calling in the DM. Lerato, good evening to you. Good evening, Carol. Hey, Tara, how's it, Lerato? I'm um, okay. I'm, I'm good, thank you. I'm good. DM is listening. What is your question or comment? Lerato? Ah, is she left? The Deputy Minister. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. In my, in my observation, uh, I believe, like other previous uh, callers have alluded, the, the, the rural areas have been neglected when coming to youth development issues. You know, for instance, if you go to Moretele local municipality and ask anyone to say, who's owning a company, you know, that, that, that is for your NYDA. No one would say, I'm owning a company because I got an assistance from NYDA. So we want to challenge them, you know, so what is it that what's the intervention that they are doing to make sure for it? the youth Babalinko rural development for your marketing rural areas they get that kind of assistance, you know? And those are the people who are voting in numbers. Come election time, you they they do vote in large numbers. So I just want to challenge them, you know. All right. So let them let, let them consider that. You know, going to rural areas, you know, 
Okay. All right, Lerato, we, 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 we've already addressed that, but I think towards the end, we'll jump back to it. Just to give it a bit more meat there. But uh, thank you so much uh, for calling in Lerato, calling from uh, TUT. And now uh, we're going to be chatting to Chichi. Chichi is back on the line. And apologies for that sound, really. Um, we're just pushing a couple of things around um, just to make sure you get clear a signal from us on the side so apologies for that uh, it's a live broadcast by the way these things happen um, thank you so much Musoto Stone being on the desk uh, doing the, a fantastic job there let's chat to Chi 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 is back on the line if we can patch Chi Chi through uh, let's hear what Chi Chi has got to say good evening to you Chi Chi um, is Chi Chi on the line? I think we've lost the Chi Chi then. All right, maybe let's quickly, maybe DM if you want to touch again on that. Gabon got it's a bit of a problem, but yeah. and you can't blame them really because yeah. uh, we have to cover everybody, like you've said, yeah. with the opening statement. No, People are worried definitely. about the rural areas, really. Look, look. I mean, I think we, we, we obviously have to emphasize with, uh, uh, with our colleagues in government that we, we probably need to do more. Uh, and I think sometimes we assume that because people bako soshanguve, bako mamilodi and all of that, bako deep slow, therefore they are within reach of certain government services. And sometimes that's not the case. And that's why we, we, we have to improve the... Uh, I mean, extending services to all those people so, mm. so that, uh, uh, you know, rural areas does not, you know, forget people who may be within an urban setup but their conditions, uh, you know, are not uh, better off uh, compared to those who are in the rural areas. So I think that's one of the things that we will have to, uh, you know, to emphasize. But if you look at what government's focus in terms of imbezos have been, has been to go to uh, to move away from the cities mm. and to go to areas where people are. And I really want to urge young people if you talk about how many imbizo, koso shanguve, or koma tatiele, or ko nusa hill, or wherever, just go there. Uh, you know, raise your voice, be heard, and ensure that you are part of raising whatever needs, uh, concerns, and demands that you have towards your own government. But even beyond that, let's even go to our local government. Let's go to our councillors. Let's go to our uh, you know, what committees and say to them, we want this particular service and we believe that government provides that service to us. There we go. 10 minutes before 7 o'clock. In fact, DM, having said that, let me just say thank you so much to the guys. Bako Bishu, Bako Lusiki Siki. That's where we were uh, with the previous Imbizos there and the turnout was quite yeah. good. And thank yeah. you so much. In fact, I saw a, a lot of young people there who participated actually yeah. in these Imbizos and that's exactly what you're calling for. Exactly. And we really appreciate that. 0800-142-446. Let's get into it because <laughs> I want us to talk about something that you're very passionate about, DM, and I share the same feeling as well. It's issues that's got to do with leadership. Get leadership. But but when I stretch at DM and I've heard you mentioning true leadership. Yeah. Tell us about that. Look, I mean I, I really think that um Firstly, the 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 world and historically, uh, you know, young people have been uh, at the center of change in whatever environment that they find themselves in, and and you know, there's been a sense that you know, especially post 1994, where in um, you know a lot of us, meaning we as young people, mm -hmm. uh, you know, tended to you know somewhat externalize leadership. Uh, you know, put responsibility in other people mm. to lead within the spaces wherein we, uh, you know, we find ourselves. Yes, for instance, the notion and concept of fees must fall have been there, uh, you know, for as long as you can think about, uh, especially young blacks, uh, uh, people have been to universities or to uh, Tibet colleges or whatever sense of leadership. But I think that, you know, now more than ever, uh, with the National Development Plan in place, with a whole range of discourse about where the country should be going, with a lot, whole range of discontent, but also with a whole range of, uh, you know, positivity about the prospect of, uh, you know, where the country needs to be, uh, uh, you know, going. I, I strongly believe that young people 
need to uh, you know really be taking things into their uh, into their own hands and when i when i say <laughs> that you know um i'm not i'm not suggesting and i in, in fact i'm one of those people who've strongly spoke uh, spoken out against uh, you know young people resorting to violence, uh, violence mm. uh, disruption of public property or young people thinking that to be rude uh, to it's be, a solution to be re- yeah. disrespectful to disregard other people to be abusive to other people mm. uh, you know it's actually leadership because i think we've also seen that you know people think that you know to be radical and militant you got to swear at people and all of that that's not leadership that's not uh, you know it it doesn't take in my view the country forward i think that uh, uh, you know we we need to be inculcating a sense in as many young people as possible uh, you know that says all right what are the big challenges that confronts mm-hmm. our country and how do we take uh, uh, you know our country forward within that context i mean historically uh, you know the the bigger vision i mean t- two days ago we're celebrating or observing or uh, you know commemorating uh, uh, nelson mandela day uh, and 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 one of the things that nelson mandela and those who fought for our liberation uh, always uh, advanced for instance is a non-racist non-sexist democratic South Africa is a country where we all belong. It's a country where we share its prosperity and all of that. Do we have that? If we don't, what what are the blockages? What are the challenges? What and 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 how do we as young people get to together irrespective of our race, gender, color, creed and all of that? How do we get together and forge mm-hmm. uh, you know some collective vision which will take us uh, uh, you know uh, 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 forward and i think that you know those are the kind of discourse uh, that we as uh, the current generation have to be involved into it's quite easy for someone to say look mandela sold out they sold the land and all of that without appreciating the conditions with which they found themselves and the kind of uh, uh, you know, future that uh, they have handed over to us, and a future that says, "Look, you are now in the driving seat as the youth of 2017, and what is it that you choose to do, being in the driving seat by taking this country forward?" And that's the sense of of leadership that I think we really need to be thinking about, not of pointing fingers, but of taking responsibility and taking action. And ensuring that through that action, we begin to bring about change within the spaces where we find ourselves. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you this, uh, Owen Tambo was the longest ever serving president of the ANC, um, I mean, from 1969 to about 1991. And uh, he was described by President uh, Jacob Zuma as a solution-oriented leader who always sought to move forward on the basis of building consciousness. Um, so... Ask yourself that question. Are you in line with that? And this is something that um, it's a challenge for me to you. Let's take a caller quickly. Pantko from Elwell North. Good evening to you, Pantko. Dumela, Pantko, what are you doing? I'm going to go to the house and I'm going to go to the house and I'm going to go to the house and I'm going to go to Thank Pat, you. Pat, Goro, Goro, you're confused at the DM. We, 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 each and every abandoned by a creeper in ninety percent abandoned by Salima Kaya, a commissary, and then by the school win. And Kaubele go to Ukash, Kumelege, Ukutima, okay, could be two thousand runs, and then Ukazu Mana and Missilin. Kaum do that, and then Kaum do see to put a Sisa Impasha Impasha and his run so that Ukazu Fuma,
for your call um, calling all the way from Eliwell North and listening via a radio station called Takalani Community Radio thank you so much for the DM just uh, quickly I'm aware that we, we've, all right. we've, uh, we've run out of time okay uh, 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 do we have another caller? I beg your pardon with that, uh, DM. Let's take okay. one more and then right. we'll on. Is it Chi Chi? Hi, Chi Chi. Hi, Karabo. It's easier to get through and to the minister in the industry. Hi, Chi Chi. It's easier to get through to the my president of this country, tongue in cheek, than to get through to you people. Please, I need to say I loved what you said from the beginning to the end. Everything must fall. Please ask for the rain to fall also. <laughs> and I need to say that I like to think that you said about the councillors. You don't want no political people to interfere. It's a very sad state of affairs here in the Park. Please, Karabo, come here with the minister that we can sort this thing out here. We've right. got a lot of problems. Thank okay. you. Thank you so much. It's actually Gigi. I recognize that voice. Gigi. One of the popular listeners um, on our shows as we do them. Thank you so much, G. I really appreciate it. I did promise you that we're going to come. We're working on it, Gigi. We're working on it. We will be there soon. Oh, there we go. So that's Gigi okay. there. All right. DM, let's go back to Patko's questions, really. Yes. I mean, just just quickly, look. I mean, uh, firstly, we must say that uh, for anybody to get a government job, you don't have to pay anything. You don't have to, if you're a man or a woman, you don't have to sleep with anybody for you to get a government mm. job. Um, and, and, and I think, I mean, I can't emphasize this anymore. Uh, and 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 I hear that it's even worse in the private sector. I was watching some television show, a youth youth television show yesterday, uh, where uh, you know young people are talking about their experiences, where you know it's sex for jobs and it's mm. cash for, cash for jobs, and they've become vulnerable. Mm. Obviously, uh, government alone cannot be able to provide all the jobs that are needed, and that's why part of government's uh, expenditure is geared towards, uh, uh, you know, stimulating private sector uh, to be able to create uh, uh, jobs. And, and, and we're hoping that with the uh, global uh, economic, ten, uh, uh, you know, turnover, the South Africa will also be able to experience the, uh, you know, the, the spin-offs uh, so that we're able to, uh, you know, uh, uh, benefit from that and, and begin to, uh, you know, create more jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's... that's uh, uh, that's that's what government is gearing, uh, you know, more towards. Uh, secondly, I agree with, uh, and I've addressed the point earlier on, that we uh, are trying very hard to ensure that we reach as many matriculants as possible, mm. to give them as much information as possible. And wherever they are listening, I urge them to apply now to whichever university that they want to apply to, uh, or TVET College or Community College, uh, uh, you know, use whatever means that they are able to. And I'm sure that uh, there has to be uh, some municipality closer to them which can have information on what needs to be done if, uh, uh, you know, they do not have access to, uh, uh, you know, whatever IT uh, facilities. And, and I think finally I agree with... Uh, uh, Patco that uh, we have to deal with uh, uh, you know with 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 corruption in all its manifestation we have to expose it and we have to also expose those leaders whom we believe are corrupt this government and I think in particular in this term has committed itself to deal with uh, you know corruption in all its uh, uh, you know its manifestation uh, and 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 I mean we we cannot even corruption is not uh, it's not a myth it's not a figment mm. of our imagination it is there it is real and not only uh, uh, you know corruption at the level of government private sector corruption people who entice police officers uh, government bureaucrats and everybody else uh, you know with bribe in exchange for service 
are themselves perpetuating corruption. So that's corruption at a small scale. There's also corruption at a, big, a bigger scale, which uh, you know government is uh, you know committed into dealing with it and have set up institutions whose main focus is to deal with uh, uh, corruption. It erodes confidence, uh, and I think that it's one of the things that we really have to deal with. And and you know and he's right that you know there are leaders that we look up to. Uh, and and when all these things happen, uh, you know, we, we then lose confidence. But what I also want to say to Patco is that in as much as the mainstream media is committed to only report about corrupt and corruption in government, he must not forget that it is not the entirety of government that is corrupt mm -hmm. and that there are leaders that we need to be emulating who are there in government, who are prepared and who are committed and whose main mission is service to our people. Coming up, uh, DM, just before we wrap it up, I'd like you to maybe to just jump in and talk about the National Youth Policy 2015-2020. But before we do that, let's take Lunga. Lunga being our last caller. Lunga calling all the way from Cape Town. Good evening to you, Lunga. Tata ndi ndifunaje kala ndi 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 kala ndi zaubane kubulela kukala kukunga kumbi kia spatili nkube nje nga lena tina suna bandwa na bacha si ngakele nga matuba nje manditi kia chani kala nje nditi oko kala ingaba uangati nchai pendu la mshambi ingaba zikoni plans ne programs ku national zoguza ma ugu rewrite hi history firstly SLS years kakulu ngo kundo kwa nake kune ji ndati kemisham kune zinte zinte kile zina kanga zi pablo sisi nikwe sina banda na babanda wa mnyama firstly talking about 1976 state ango june 16 lo sisu kakuye a lot has been said already about you on about nothing much has been said about the people who were actually accused and people who were actually arrested for organizing such matches and i think that history needs to start to be rewriting maybe mshambi uh, if ever there is a plan from the national, uh, I would like to hear it. Maybe Nabandwa Nabuayetu can start to be proud of, I would say, leaders that are out there. So, then moving to the community, we have to communities. When we look at the national development plan, we have to program. We have to be proud of the people who are in the community. We have to skills. We talk about young people who are graduates already. Uh, we've got young people in Mshamba Banye, Abakwe groups that have seen so much isolated. Ungateta Mshambi, they are Rastafari communities. Kuna Bandwa na Bapuma Mshambi, ex-prisoners. Abaye Babanjo Mshambi, Bafunda skills within. Ingaba there are plans. Ingaba zikona ni plans to integrate these young people, bringing them back to bring that kind of confidence. Kubo, as well as the community moving forward. And also when we utilizing Ababa as graduates. Because we work on as a career that exhibitions is going and good to about our second so many cases of the passaries. But the reality is we still see many graduates within our community. So what is the national plan reality? If you look at the NZK, you can't do the NZK, you can't do the NZK, you can't do the NZK. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Lunga. Thank you so much to Radio Helderberg. Yeah. DM, let's go straight Governor, to those. And, and I think the, the points that Lunga is raising are related to to what the National Youth Policy 2020 is all about. Mm -hmm. Firstly, about giving second chances to young people, um, particularly those young people who are, uh, uh, you know, in correctional facilities, mm -hmm. uh, uh, in, in, in prisons and all of that. I know there was a big story about... Uh, uh, you know, some strippers who were sneaked oh, into yeah. one of the jails. That's not our way of rehabilitating. No, no that's you know? not. <laughs> uh, there are there are programs uh, that have been put that that are in place uh, through the the Department of Correctional Service, which are targeted at young people who are incarcerated. But they also have got access to uh, you know education opportunities and a whole range of other things, and a way in which we can be able to integrate them back into societies. Um, uh, you know, and there are discussions in government about whether our, uh, you know, uh, correctional, the, the, the philosophy of our, uh, you know, rehabilitation and, uh, you know, integration of, uh, you know, offenders into communities, whether has that borne any fruits? Uh, because most young people who, uh, uh, you know, are offenders and are therefore put into jail 
are more likely to go back into jail mm. than any other young person. So those are some of the things which we're looking at, uh, you know, in, in government and which is something that's raised quite strongly in the National Youth Policy 2020 in terms of what what uh, what needs to be done. With regards to history, I mean, um, look, we, we have, uh, I think, one of the... Uh, uh, oh, okay, let me put it this way. Uh, I think what 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 has been done as part of the review of the history that was taught in the past, uh, uh, you know, is quite progressive because it includes now, uh, you know, the historical uh, events whose uh, which which were intended to be wiped out uh, from the memory of our country, uh, and 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 I think the big thing which we say in the National Youth Policy 2020 is that we want to see over time history being compulsory for all learners mm -hmm. in our schools. Because once we know where we come from, it means that there is no likelihood for us in repeating that. But I also want to encourage Lunga and many other young people to read he, uh, books about history. There are many books that are there which speaks about the history of our struggle, the histories of dispossession, the histories of uh, you know colonization, the history of apartheid itself. Mm. You know, and how ugly a system it was. Uh, you know, both uh, uh, you know black, white, Indian, and coloured young people should be able to engage with uh, you know the the the, the history that's uh, uh, there that speaks about where we come from so that we are not able to uh, end are not uh, you know in any way repeating that but in a nutshell the national youth policy 2020 is about how do we deal with uh, or rather get young people into educational institutions, uh, get young people skilled, get young people economically active, support their entrepreneurial uh, you know, initiative, but also deal with drugs and substance abuse. Mm. It's essentially a policy that mobilizes the whole of government to look at and focus on young people and make young people their priority. Right. It's coming up to 10 minutes after 7 o'clock, and that's where we're going to leave it for this evening. But maybe before we do that, uh, DM, we know that young people, Rata, things out on the movies, we're into the arts mostly. Yes. And I was just thinking now as you're talking, maybe a bit of encouragement. You you saw the movie Kalush. Yes. Uh, Maybe tell us about that, just to inspire the young people out there, just to motivate them that, look, um, the future's ahead of us. Look, I mean, I think uh, I would I would say to any and every young person out there, if you haven't seen the movie Kalushi, make yourself a favor, go and watch it. I hope it will be shown on, uh, you know, public broadcasters platform. It's a movie that tells a story of where we come from. Um, it's a movie that shows the bravery of young people. It's a movie that shows the selflessness uh, of young people and the leadership role that young people uh, you know, uh, took in the face of an apartheid system that was determined to exterminate uh, you know, the seats that mm. uh, you know, was to become the future. And I believe that it's a movie which will encourage the whole lot of us you know, to not stand back to be involved, to take action, and to change the lives of the people within our own surroundings. There is no one, uh, not anywhere, be it political leaders who make rhetorical commitments and statements, there is no one who will take responsibility for changing your own life except you, Umundomusha. So I hope that young people will emulate the example of Kalushi for us to take this country forward. Deputy Minister in the Presidency, Deputy Minister Budiman Amela, thank you so much for your time, DM. I really appreciate it. Thank you. It's That's nice great. to see you again. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much to everybody who's called in from Lunga to Gigi Patko, Lerato, Anti uh, Tepo, De, Lebu, Matangu, and everybody that's trying to call in that couldn't get in. We'd like to say apologies. Next time we'll do it again. Don't worry. DM, you, you come here again. Of course, I will be here. Most Most there we go. Ah, no, no. DM will be here. <laughs> Here again, so pretty excited to do that. If you've missed out on the show, or maybe you'd like to tell your friends about the show, it's available on uh, on YouTube as well. You can go and um, maybe just search under a national development plan, and some of the videos that will come up, you'll see the DMs one is there as well. So go check it out. From myself, Karabalans Stolana, Saba Matebele. Let me thank the producers on the other side, Kimusoto Stone on sound. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Stone, as well as Anontan Dawonde. She's got a funky hair, you can tell she's very youthful. Cool.
<laughs> this evening. Thank you so much, Nontanta, for the good work that you've done. And our colleague coming from the video department, making sure that this is seen on YouTube. I don't know. There's so many names, but he's doing an incredible job. Thank you so much, sir. Karabalant signing off. It's the NDP 2030. Our future, make it work.